It's about the way our society is working now in ways that are shielding people from the truth in order to maintain these narratives, as, as they call them. Why were people upset that Donald Trump wanted to explore for oil in Alaska? What he's talking about is drilling for oil in a place that was designated for drilling for oil a long time ago. When you put an oil well in, it takes up a very small space. And the way things work these days is when oil men and women go into an oil producing area, it's fenced off. And they are actually not allowed to go outside where the wildlife is. It's a very small area where they have their accommodations in these huge landscapes. The pipeline itself is not in the way of anything. They put it up so animals can walk under it, in fact. And uh, so I, I know they make a big deal about this, but this is basically the people who are against oil. And so, therefore, they're against anybody who wants to get oil, and they make up all kinds of fake reasons about why they shouldn't get the oil. But talking about polar bears in terms of that area of Alaska is kind of silly because there's grizzly bears there, but that's not where the polar bears live. Polar bears live where there's ice on the ocean and further up in the Arctic islands. Is it true that polar bears are endangered? Well, they were endangered uh, in the 1970s and probably something you've never heard because the media and the polar bear people don't really want you to know it, is that in 1973, because of concern over the polar bear being hunted too much, the polar bear population was declining rapidly in the 1960s and into the early 1970s. There may have been as few as 6,000, possibly as many as 10,000, but no more left in the whole Arctic. So all the polar nations, the United States, the Soviet Union, Denmark, which owns Greenland, so it has polar bears, and Canada and Norway signed a new agreement, a treaty, to ban the unrestricted hunting of polar bears in the Arctic, around the whole Arctic. Every country that had polar bears signed that treaty. And since then, the polar bear population, and this is conclusively done with counting every year around the Arctic, has risen to somewhere between 26,000 and 35,000 in 47 years. And some people think there's more than 50,000 because you can't count them all. But so they're, the ones they're counting are really ones they have counted, but they're spread out all over the place. It's a big place up there, bigger, big as Australia. So the polar bear population has recovered fantastically. It's one of the great conservation success stories of the 20th and 21st century. It is a success story. And yet, because they're remote and you can't see it for yourself, they, they make up a story saying the polar bears are endangered with extinction. It is simply not true. They are doing better now than they have for a long time. And they're not being hunted anymore except by a few native people. There are, there's some exceptions for the native people who lived up there for two or 3,000 years. Now, those people are called the Inuit. And in Canada, they have a whole territory of their own called Nunavut. It is the treeless part of the Arctic in Canada, where it's too cold for trees, which is very cold. Because trees can grow at 60 below Celsius in some places, but they can't grow in Nunavut because of how cold it is. And people live there in small villages. The Nunavut has their own governing council. And the Nunavut recently passed a polar bear management plan because polar bears are getting so populous that they're eating people. They don't really like having to go to funerals for their fellow villagers who've been eaten by a polar bear or killed by a polar bear. So they have put together a management plan which gives the people the right to kill a polar bear if it is attacking them or their family because there's so many of them now. This story of them managing the polar bears was denied by the Canadian government because the Canadian government is full of environment people who want to continue making money studying the polar bears. 
That's why it's, it's money in politics and power that is the responsibility for these scare stories. Because you can imagine, if you have to depend on the activists, the media, the politicians, and the scientists who are getting all this money to do these studies to tell you the truth, when they are the ones that have a huge financial interest in continuing the scare story, that's not very good advice to take their advice. Now, so when the, when the Inuit people, which have, there are thousands of them, there's 30,000 of them living up there, they passed that management plan in their government and only one newspaper in Canada reported it, a newspaper in Nunavut in a town where there are 1,200 people. Canada has over 35 million people, and none of those other people were told that the Nunavut had passed a management plan because there were too many polar bears, because no one wants them to know that. So the whole thing about fake news these days is that the media is with, much of the media, not all of it, but most of it, is withholding information from the public that they don't want the public to know because it messes up with their narrative scare story, which makes them get more advertising on their TVs and radios and newspapers and magazines. So you have to look at the economic and social aspect of these scare stories. It's not just about environment. It's about the way our society is working now in ways that are shielding people from the truth in order to maintain these narratives, as, as they call them. I, I like to, when someone says it's a narrative, I say, oh, you mean a fairy tale. Because narrative is not a scientific word, but it's used all the time, the climate change narrative. And so don't, another critical thinking point, don't believe anything that has the word narrative in it. Because that means it's a story, not a science fact. The video you just watched is for a new education platform called True Arrow Academy of Critical Thinking, or TACT for short. TACT will be an alternative education resource platform that's non-woke and non-indoctrinating, with each lesson being a potential turning point in a young learner's understanding on a range of important topics. TACT will evolve into many hundreds of animations and filmed lessons written, run and influenced by an exceptional mix of academic heavyweights teaching against the grain, with lessons encouraging open discussion, critical thinking and debate. TACT's duty of care is to arm and shield you against modern, subversive, mainstream education. Supporters will be the lifeblood of TACT if you would like to support this project, let's build this together at givesendgo.com forward slash tact. Thank you so much.